Norman Pardo joins me now. Norman, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first, your reaction to the news today that O.J. Simpson is dead. Well, it's a sad day because nobody really gets to close the book without O.J. telling what happened. It's uh, sad. Yeah, we just heard from that statement from Kim Goldman. I think they were always waiting for true accountability and they never got it. Um, and it's interesting, you've alleged in this documentary that O.J. didn't act alone. So perhaps some accountability might be coming for somebody else. Tell me why you think he didn't act alone. Well, we spent 20 years investigating it. It wasn't like a, a two minute thing. And we've, we, we found out who did it. Uh, O.J. was with the guy who did it at the beginning, but after O.J. got cut, he ran out and left. So O.J. wasn't really there for all the murders. He was only there and just got cut. The other guy did most of the most. Of it. He did it all, really. Uh, what other guy? And he's a bona fide killer. It was Glenn Rogers, and the guy that everybody said couldn't have done it, but he was there, and our investigators found all the evidence, including where he worked and where he lived. And who was Glenn Rogers to O.J.? Well, he was a guy that actually wasn't really working as much for O.J. It's working for a few people. He was supposed to keep an eye on O.J. and find out who was dealing her drugs. Okay. And uh, when they when they confronted Ron in the garden or in the front there, uh, that's when a fight ensued between Glenn and Ron. O.J. got cut in the middle of it, and he ran out the door and left all on mud. That's why O.J. never believed he did it, because he was already stepped out of the gate by the time it happened. When did you last speak to O.J., and what did he say to you? Can you hear me? When did, you, when did you last speak to O.J.? Yeah. About a month ago, we, we got back together to sort of reconcile our situation because we, he got really mad at me when I showed him the letter from Glenn Rogers from prison. He was in prison. I sent him a letter that Glenn Rogers said, sent to me stating, you know, tell O.J. I'm sorry about what happened to his wife. I didn't mean it. So I sent it to O.J., and I expected O.J. to say, oh, wow, you found the murder. Instead, O.J. blew up and said, I can't believe you're talking to this guy. I told you to stay away from this guy. I don't know you anymore. That's when I knew O.J. knew him. And he got real mad at me, so we didn't we didn't talk for a while. He told all his family and friends, don't talk to me. I'm a bad guy. And uh, I just kept the investigation going until it was done. So when you did speak to him about a month ago, he must have known at that point that he could be dying soon. Did he say yeah, anything? He I mean, it. usually people want to get something off their chest if they know they're close to death. Did he? All he said was basically he wanted to just basically me and him get back to where we were before we started an argument. He just wanted to be friends again. All right. But nothing about the events of that night. And that was the no, he wanted to just forget about it. He never wanted to talk about what happened that night. And he knew that I had found out. I mean, you know, you can go to ojtapes.com, anybody can. I put also some real cool video footage of just OJ so people can know what he's like. So you can see what happened and you can see him talking about it. So really, that's the place to go to for, for OJ stuff. You can't really just, OJ is like a chameleon. He changes every day. You never know one OJ from the next. Yeah. Was he a bad guy? He wasn't a nice guy, that's for sure. Was Norman, he a murderer? That's in question. Norman Pardo, uh, thank you for your perspective. Uh, interesting. I appreciate you having me on the show. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.